Hey, I'm Nikhilesh. And I'm Kushal. We're, We're the, the two, two broke scientists. scientists. If you want to know how to win a million dollars, keep watching. So, rising smoke is probably something that is not really exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see it everywhere from yeah. a person smoking a cigarette or smoke coming out of a chimney. Yeah. But I think what makes it exciting is the way that it rises. You see something that transitions from a smooth and orderly flow mm -hmm. to something that's just chaotic. That is a classic example of turbulence. Wait, turbulence? Mm -hmm. Haven't you heard of it somewhere? And the captain has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. Got a little turbulence coming up, should be no problem. Just remain in your seat until the sign is turned off. Thank you for your cooperation. Yep, that's where. So I think it's a fair question to ask if the turbulence we saw from the smoke rising was in any way related to the turbulence we experience in a plane. Well, let's get right into it then. What is turbulence? Fluid flow is classified into three fundamental regimes. Laminar flow, transitional flow and turbulent flow. Laminar flow is fluid flowing in a very orderly manner. Basically, the fluid flows in the form of layers and the motion is very predictable. Turbulent flow is when things start getting dicey. The flow becomes chaotic, disordered and unpredictable. There is a region of transition between laminar and turbulent regimes which is called transitional flow. In this flow, the flow has both laminar and turbulent behavior. Turbulent flow is characterized by chaotic motion. But there's a very subtle point to note here. Chaotic motion is different from random motion. In turbulence, there is even order within the chaos. But we'll get to that a little later. An important distinction between laminar and turbulent flow is that laminar flow can even be two-dimensional. But turbulent flow is always three-dimensional. But just because a flow is chaotic and three-dimensional, doesn't make it turbulent. An important aspect of turbulence is mixing. Turbulent mixing is exactly what happens when you stir your morning cup of coffee. But why does flow have to become turbulent? Well, simply put, nature prefers chaos and disorder. You might have heard the scientific term for it. Entropy. Now entropy could be another video in itself. You can also check out a few interesting videos about entropy right here. Even in fluid flow, entropy plays a crucial role in determining its behavior. In nature and in most engineering applications, the flow is turbulent. Laminar flow is usually unstable and transitions to turbulence. To explain this, let's take a simple analogy. If you have ever played with Jenga blocks, you know what we're talking about. You start off nice and structured, just like laminar flow. And as you keep building higher and higher, the tower becomes less and less stable exactly like the transitional regime in fluid flow. One small disturbance at this transitional phase <laughs> Turbulence The transition from laminar to turbulent flow is quantified by a number known as the Reynolds number. Basically, the Reynolds number represents the ratio of the inertial forces and the viscous forces that act on a fluid. If you look at the formula for Reynolds number, you see that the inertial force is representative of the momentum of the fluid. So a fluid that flows faster has more momentum and thus a higher Reynolds number. A short Jenga tower is like a flow with a low Reynolds number. As you keep building higher, that's equivalent to saying you increase the Reynolds number and the tower becomes susceptible to collapse or turbulence. If the fluid moves really slowly, viscous forces tend to negate the effect of disturbances and the flow tends to remain laminar. Okay, that was a lot of information. So let's do a quick recap. A high Reynolds number means that inertial forces tend to dominate and the flow can tend to become turbulent. But a low Reynolds number means that viscous forces dominate and the flow will try to stay laminar. But just because nature prefers turbulence does not make it easy to understand. In fact, turbulence is one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in mathematics. The complete solution to the equations that describe fluid flow, the Navier-Stokes equation, are one of the seven millennium price problems. And if you find a solution to them, 
you win a million US dollars. A complete analytical solution to the Navier-Stokes equation may not exist. But turbulence is modeled using computational fluid dynamics. These programs approximate the effect of turbulence on fluid flow by making certain assumptions. Remember that we said that turbulence was order in chaos and not just random motion of particles everywhere? Well, even though turbulent motion is chaotic, there is a certain order or coherence to it. If you look closely into the structures that develop in a turbulent flow, you see that it's almost like a symphony of packets of fluid just moving around and dancing around together. That was order on the microscopic scale. But now let's look at the macroscopic scale. This is explained in the NSF tutorials very eloquently. The disorder is of such a fundamental nature that the flow never is reproducible in detail, no matter how carefully one attempts to reproduce all the boundary conditions. Although the details are not reproducible, averages over suitably large intervals of space or time may be very well defined and stable. Disorder, then, is a necessary factor in any definition of turbulence. So we know what makes flow turbulent. But where do we see turbulent flow? Everywhere. Most flows in nature or even in engineering flows are turbulent. The exhaust from a car, smoke from a chimney, blood flowing in arteries and veins, flow around your car and even atmospheric flows. They are all turbulent. Only in very special cases is a fluid flow completely laminar. So we asked you how turbulence in the rising smoke was different from the turbulence that we experience in a plane. Well, because of pressure difference in the atmosphere and changing landscapes, turbulence is generated. And when an aircraft moves through this turbulent air, the load generated by the wing changes. And this causes the vibration that you experience. But don't worry, it's not dangerous. And there hasn't been a crash in the last 40 years due to turbulence. The turbulence that we saw in the rising smoke was at a completely different scale from what you see in the atmosphere. But both of them are essentially the same phenomenon. That was turbulence in a nutshell. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. And finally, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye. We hit turbulence!